Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showcasing you my in-depth deck profile as well as um, analysis behind my card choices for the uh, water deck that I took to top 4 at the PPG Weekend Championship this past weekend. Um, so without further ado, we'll go right into it. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this deck profile. So I'm going to be showcasing you uh, my card choices um, and what I played this past weekend. So I decided to play 3 Ash, 3 Nibiru, and then Imperm just to like have, I think, 7 hand traps. I think that's a 63-64% chance if you use a hyper geometric calculator uh, like for the deck building portion. Uh, I did the math on it and two thirds are basically two out of every three hands. You should draw at least one hand trap. And you wanted that just so that you can defeat the um, combo outlook deck because they fold to one hand trap. And so like that's the main reason why, even though I, I don't really want to play hand traps, I like had to. Um, because hand traps are technically bricks, right? Like they don't actually advance your combos. They they kind of like stop your opponent. Um, so that's like the main reason why I played it. I played Triple Dragoons. Uh, this card is literally insane. Like when this card came back to three, uh, this it's, it was absolutely the nuts. Like this card is not once per turn. Um, and yeah, it, it's just like, it's just so good. Um, there's just like not really much to say about Dragoons. Like this card is like literally insane. It's like MVP of the deck for sure. Uh, triple infantry because infantry gives you a double summon for the deck so like if you open up infantry and you like if you break you can go if if heavy infantry diva is combo uh heavy infantry minstrel is combo because minstrel for some god for second reason is also a tuner and then also like uh, infantry into like neptibus gives you like more uh plays um to like break your opponent's board so that's like really really good as well um so that's why i really like this card and obviously it has like Grave the effect where like if it's discarded to activate a water monster's effect it can just like you know target a face-up card and just blow it up so i guess like the elec deck for example right if they summon like you know the golden lord you can activate like minstrel effect dump infantry rip card out of their hand infantry effect pop the golden lord and then their back row is essentially just dead because um they need golden lords to stay on the field right so and then they always shotgun the golden lord because they don't want to lose to like i don't know like uh, lightning storm they don't want to lose to like ash or um like things like that they just want to like do it immediately so that um uh they just like don't lose out so that's like why heavy infantry is also like just really insane at breaking apart boards going second uh diva is like literally a god car like she's so good she's like a lady debug right if you compare it to like salamagre so like her normal summon is so impactful but if it gets interrupted it's really really bad uh that's why like neptibus is like really really insane but if diva goes off like it's it's usually just game uh minstrel is like the new card in eternity code that literally makes this deck viable um because it's like one of the only combo decks that can actually play through nibiru consistently um so like minstrels will always guarantee that like under five summons you will always banish the nibiru and also like if you hard open the minstrel itself you guarantee playing through any hand trap right so like and the thing is like if you rip the hand trap back yes they get it back at the end phase but it doesn't matter because by then you have vfd draw two and like you you just win the game so like minstrel is just like crazy um taze is like insane uh taze is like really really crazy because it can dump dragoon so it has a dragoon trigger but it's also like a free water special summon from your hand um so like that's the reason why i like taze um it's also like semi like strong like 1700 is like not bad so you can like beat most uh bo through both most stuff but it also lets you some like makes you like get out the area without like normal summoning sometimes um if, if you have like extenders so like taze is like pretty decent um, you also have, like, Moonglacia. Like, that card is just crazy. Like, hand loops you for two. It's, like, so free. It's included in every combo. So, like, there's no reason not to play it. Uh, Neptibus is, like, really, really good. Uh, it's, all, it's basically based out two interruptions by herself. Like, that's how good Neptibus is. Because Neptibus jumps for costs. Uh, so, if he gets Valor there, then Dragoon searches. So, if that gets hand trapped, like, that's fine. Like, that means two interruptions, right? Just one card. So, they lo they went, like, literally neg one. Um then you have like pike to search off of taste like pike is okay i, I like didn't really want to play this card but it's actually a decent normal summon for the for the deck because if you draw it with dragoon it's like full combo so that's like the re main reason why i decided to like play and like you also like it can search min minstrels so it's like not too bad um then lapis dragons like just because uh you want to like if you hard open neptibus instead of diva it gets you like the extra tuner that's like pretty much why uh then you play the despot 001 and the o-line that's just for like the aurora dawn like uh, needle fiber combo um you play three call by not much to say about this this card is amazing it's an insane offensive and defensive card like i think i was able to like uh call by the block dragon i was able to call by like hand traps uh i called by like golden lords like this card was just insane like 
Uh, like, if you're playing combo deck, there's, like, literally no reason why, like, you shouldn't play this card. Like, in a 15 hand trap format, you need to actually play call by. It's just insane. Uh, Midbreaker field is FTK. Uh, not much to say about this. You activate this card. I played through four hand traps. I played through four hand traps with Midbreaker field. I played through double uh, Valor Imperm. Uh, and then I played through the, the Ash with uh, Minstrel. And then, um, yeah, it was just GG, man. Like, even though he, even if he had Nibiru, it didn't, like, he had Nibiru too. I went with Glacier, dumped the whole hand. GG. Like, it was just crazy. This card is insane. Um, there's no reason why you shouldn't play this card. It's like, it's just guaranteed all your cards are going through. Um, it's just literally crazy. Um, like, Monster Reborn, because if you get Hand Trapped on Nethibus or Diva, you activate Monster Reborn, tar target their uh, Hand Trap, and then just go full Needle Fiber combo. So it's just literally insane. One for one, because it lets you get Nephthibus without your normal summon. Absolutely broken, because you can go to summon Nephthibus, normal summon any tuner. If they hand trap Nephthibus, which is two hand traps, by the way, um, then you can normal summon any tuner, and then they need a third hand trap to play through the Needle Fiber. It's just crazy. Uh, Avarice, because um, you lose your whole, like, basically, like, around 10 to 15 cards of your, like, combined extra deck and deck goes to the graveyard. So uh, you need Avarice to, like, shuffle back so you have, like, follow up and recovery plays. Like, Avarice is, like, literally mandatory. I think, like, like being able to play this without Avarice is, like, it's like saying that like if they break your board you just lose the game like i just i just can't accept like decks i just lose if they just break your board um that's why like that's why like it's basically like like block dragon for the deck right it's like a form of recovery like uh, yes it can break you like it's bad it's worse than block dragon in that sense but i i think i'm willing to take that break just because it's 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 so good man like and drawing two in like the grind game is like really insane it helps you play through like you know like control decks really well and unless you grind with them right and so like you can recycle back like inventory and like start popping like protocol start popping like uh hidden city start popping the groove like they, they have to like play through like continuous like just um interruption and disruption like that average is really really insane uh then the one of impermanence because i explained this already like for my hand trap count um, in terms of the side deck, I'll go with side deck first. I play uh, the Valor and then the other two Imperm, so that puts me at 10 hand trap count after siding. Um, I think that's like around like 75%-ish percent chance to open up one hand trap. So like, I want to increase the percentages that I would open up a hand trap. Like if I were to play against like combo all like that, because it just floats the deck. Imperm is also like kind of better than Valor in the sense because Imperm actually stops. Um, like it plays around like the Guardian, the Kokomiro Guardian. So like that's why I opted to play more uh imperm and then just the one of uh valor because like i said i wanted like 10 hand traps um and i play like post siding like three extra hand traps um so i built my side deck to like play around both like control decks and combo deck and like what's in the meta game so cosmic cyclone is um and the three uh lightning storm is for essentially like back row decks so like if you want to like like at Guru, guys, a striker, like those control decks, like I wanted to be able to like blow them out. And um, Cosmic Second One just outs Mystic Mind too, which is like, in this, like it's such a degenerate card. But I think it's definitely necessary in this format where people are ending on like some of the most insane boards ever. Uh, you also are playing uh, Dark Ruler No More. Um, I think Dark Ruler No More is like insane. Um, it's not really much to say about this card. Like it's just, you know, like I, I, I drew this versus Triff. Uh, this card was like crazy. Uh, no, like if you draw it against a rock board, it's card is crazy, and then you just break. Like they can have like ten monsters and you or like ten cards on the field, and you just blow up everything because you have Vermilion, Crocosaurus, Coral Dragon, uh, if I have inventory, so you actually like pop the whole board. So like they have like no resources left. Um, Mystic Mind because this card is FTK, if it resolves this against a rock deck. Um, it's also an instant bait. Then you play set rotation. I actually really like set rotation because um, it guarantees it can get you like midbreaker field uh, going second, and um. And all, or it can get you Mystic Mind, so either or, depending on how you want to play it. Um, if you get Midbreaker Field, it's because you're just trying to OTK them, so it doesn't matter if you give them Mystic Mind. And it, it circumvents, like, so Midbreaker Field is really OP, but you can't Terraforming it. Uh, you can, but you can't activate it right away because it's like extravagance. You have to open, you have to like activate it at the start of your M1, like immediately. You can't just like activate it every other card, then activate Midbreaker Field. So um, that's the thing with uh, this card. Uh, you're playing double impermanence, which I explained. And then reboot, reboot's FTK. Not much to say about that. It's like an auto win button, like red reboot. You can see him pulling a lever. Yeah, that lever is like literally. Uh, it says win. So uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't play that card. Um, then like the extra deck is pretty much like standard. Like it's Savage, Coral, uh, Rose Maiden, Herald, uh, Crocosaurus, and Vermilion. Like Herald actually conflicts with the deck a little bit, but you actually just link it off the falling turn and just kill them. Um, if you go for this line of play, so it like doesn't matter. Uh, VFD is really insane. Uh, access code talker is insane. Not much to say. Hawk your firebacks. Not much to say. You play two just for the grind game. Being, if you don't draw uh, average, try again the following turn. Double Rard on. Same thing. Uh, area is literally a god card. Area bring back their needle fiber and then just make access code talker pop their board. Uh, bait interruption. They can't conquistador it in like the Elec matchup because I get a free search. So I, I search Diva, I search Minstrel. Um, anything with 1500 or less defense. So the card is literally insane. 
Um, and then uh, Phoenix, I like a uh, random back row. It's a different attribute for access code talker, so that's nice. Link Rebo, because there's some part of the combo where you actually have to make Link Rebo with Neftabiz so that you can get five waters in the graveyard for Mglacia. Um, so like that's like pretty much it. Um, I, I really like a uh, Link Rebo for that, but it's also like if you ever if you already have a Link Rebo in the graveyard, you can actually dodge Valor um, with Neptibus, so you can go normal summon Neptibus, effect, they chain Valor, uh, you can chain Link Rebo, send it to the graveyard, summon the Link Rebo, Neptibus still resolves, so it's just, like, literally insane, um, so, like, you can dodge hand traps if you, like, skillfully, like, use that, um, it's like, like, graveyard effect, um, but yeah, man, this is, like, pretty much, like, the deck profile, um, I, now, like, in terms of, like, card choices and, like, uh, why I didn't play certain cards. So, let me explain, like, the theory behind that. So, you're probably thinking, like, um, Abyss Megalo. Okay, so you're probably thinking, like, yo, Pack, you're not playing, like, Abyss Megalo. What's good? This card is insane. Like, you know, play this every water deck. I think, like, what I bring to this deck is that I never actually played, like, uh, you know, the water deck before, ever. Like, I, I just started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! in July of 2019, as you guys may know. And so, like, when I saw the water deck and the potential and I read, like, Eternity Code cards... I, I read Minstrel and I realized that this card is literally insane. So I like built the deck, really not around it, but like incorporating it. And so um, I saw like standard, you know, like water lists and like water lists in the past. And I realized everyone's playing Mermails, uh, like Abyss Megalo. They're playing like the Abyss Spells and Traps. And I realized they're actually all brick in testing. Um, like Abyss Megalo, right? It's literally a minus two. And sometimes you can't even resolve this card. Um, because if you do, if you take the uh, Hyper Geometric Calculator, you need to open Megalo with two other water cards for this card to actually like resolve the summon. Um, so like Abyss Megalo is like, it's just terrible. And like um, the effect of like searching a spell or trap is also like super bricky. Like those cards like don't do anything for you. And like the the um the abyss spell like uh that actually prevents or that negates the first spell that the opponent activates it's super like terrible too because like you actually have to equip it to a mermail card for it to be relevant and so um yeah those cards just aren't good and you're probably wondering like yo pack in your extra deck you're not playing like mermail abyss lagia like yeah this card like you never summon it this card is just like terrible like it's good if you play like just pure mermails but what i'm doing is i'm essentially like playing uh like needle fiber turbo with um with hand loops incorporated in it while playing around like infinity hand traps like, it's like that's like the goal of the deck right you want your combo deck to be as resilient as possible and as and because i'm playing like pretty much a rogue deck right like i'm playing a deck that like a lot of people like don't even know what half the cards do like like people will be hand trapping me at the wrongest times i just play through four hand traps just because like like not even joking i play through three hand traps like very consistently if i open up playable like it's it's, it's just insane like this deck is crazy um and you're probably thinking yo pack no abyss gun um no this card is also a brick because it assumes yeah you have like mermail monsters in your graveyard for it to actually be relevant so um you need to have taste in the graveyard already you need to have like uh you know uh, what's the other one megalo in your graveyard already so like most of the time this card just like doesn't do anything for you so yeah it's just terrible the only one i actually other considered besides pike was a abyss dine but this card misses timing like nothing else so if you go like taste dump dragoons i would actually just miss timing and after you search dine so you can't even summon this card which is like just terrible um so you have to like discard like a good water monster or like a, any other water monster besides dragoon summon dine and then like just um yeah and then just like yeah like it, it's, it's just terrible this card is just not not good um and then that's pretty much that's like pretty much like the theory behind it uh the other thing like people are probably asking me is like yo pack uh, you're kind of crazy man deep sea aria yeah, this car is broken it's like it's so good well no this car is actually terrible like um because and i'll explain to you why Deep Sea Aria is not a starter. Like, if you look at the role of cards in this deck, right? Like, um, what does the card, like, what purpose does this card serve in your deck? Well, Deep Sea Aria is neither a starter because you, for it to be a starter, you need to already have a water monster in your grave. How do you get a water monster in your grave? Well, Neptibus is a normal summon. So, it, you have, that means you, it assumes you already heart open Neptibus. At that point, Aria is just a break because it's not an extender because there's no, level four sea serpent that you search that actually makes it an extender so it's just like another starter which is a break but it's a starter only if you open another starter which actually means it's not a starter so if you guys got if you guys understood that logic right there is ebcr is terrible like you have to play multiple cards that dump water monsters to your graveyard so like you have to like you right now i'm playing three taste three minstrel right those are the only cards in, in my deck right now that like dumps like just by itself like dumps a water monster from my hand to the graveyard so that means I need to, like, Aria is only good if I open it with six other cards in my deck, which means Aria by itself is a break. 
And so if you do the math on that, um, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Party, uh, which is a hyper hyper geometric calculator, is really really good at determining. And so so right now, guys, I'm gonna show you guys the um the math behind this um logic. So we're gonna open up uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Party, which is a um a hyper geometric calculator. So in a 40 card deck with five cards, um, your starting hand, you're going first. Uh, this card is called Deep Sea Aria. You're gonna play three of it, and you want to draw at least one. Then you're gonna play water. We're gonna call this water mo water dumper, right? These are cards that can like in your main deck that can help you dump a water monster to your graveyard without committing to a normal summon, right? Um, that makes deep sea Arya alive. So in this case, you have uh, six of them. So you have six one one. Look at this math. You have a seventeen point two nine percent chance to open up the deep sea Arya card. Plus a card that dumps a water monster to your graveyard, which means 83% of the time that you draw Arya with any other card in your hand, you're probably going to brick on it. So Arya is a brick. That's all I'm saying. And like, and like you, cause you have to like open it in conjunction with other cards for it to even be live or else it's a brick, right? Like that's the thing about deep sea Arya. Like the card could be good, but unfortunately it's like I said, it's not a starter. It's not an extender. It doesn't like, it doesn't do anything. Um, so that that's that's the thing with uh, Aria. Now the next thing you're probably wondering is pack, 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 pack. Well, you're a little wild, man. You're not playing uh, you're not playing the pot of greed and the Zach. Okay, first of all, Maria Pugit is not a pot of greed. It's literally a mulligan. You might as well play magical mullet at that point, right? But okay, Maria of greed. You're probably wondering, yo, pack. You're not playing Maria of greed. Yo, it shuffles back your bricks, man. Like, well, yeah, dove. You're playing like Megalo and like all these other cards, right? Like, of course you want to shuffle back your bricks, like. Playing more bricks should shuffle back your bricks doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? It's just like a pile of bricks. Like a, you can build a house from those bricks at that point. So with Moray of Greed, I'm going to show you guys the math. I'm going to count you my water count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I played 21 water in my main deck. We're going to go back to the hyper geometric calculator. Let's call this Moray of Greed. These are water monsters. 21 to 21 so i have to open up one moray of greed and two water monsters in your hand for that card to be live you have a 26 percent chance of, of opening this are you kidding me that means 74 percent of the time you're opening up moray with non-water cards non-water cards like you don't have and you don't have two water cards in your hand which means Marae is a what? It's a brick. It's like Deep Sea Aria. That's like the thing about this deck. Like for the card to be live, it has a requirement that um is based off of RNG. And so that's why like the card isn't like good. Like to open, like you're not always opening up two water. And people are, uh, might argue like, but pack, you're playing a smaller water package. You're playing like these, all these, uh, you know, O lines and like, like all this like stuff. I will show you the law of diminishing returns. The more water cards you play in your deck doesn't actually increase the percentages by that much. So let's say I play 30, 30 water monsters. The percentage went from 26 to 32. You get you had to increase the water count by nine water monsters for a 7% increase that you don't brick with Marae. That means it's this right here tells me that two thirds of the time I'm bricking with Marae of Greed in like two out of every three hands if I open it. Um. I don't know. They, like, this right here is just terrible. Like, I that's just why I'm not playing Maria of Greed. Like, it's it's just a brick. Like, it just doesn't do anything. Like, like it. yes, it can shuffle back Lapis Dragon, which I draw on every hand for some reason. Like, it just loves me. Or, like, it shuffles back, like, um, you know, like, other bricks. But, unfortunately, yeah, like, Maria of Greed isn't just, isn't that good. Like, you know, I did the math on the back end, and I just want to show you guys some of, like, the deck building theory and the process and, like, my analysis like these cards like were put in there for like a reason like they weren't random like i didn't just throw in cards just like throwing cards like i did it um with a purpose right like i really evaluated this like this deck um and i wanted to like take it to a competitive stance and i was able to do it by like doing a lot of like you know like proper deck building and so definitely shout out to like jesse um for like helping me like you know gain that skill if you watch my dropping the topping uh video um so yeah, that's that's like some of the reasons and some of the the, the main reasons why like they play Marae. Um, and if you do the math like using that uh you know that website, you'll see that like uh you know, like that's why I miss Bangalore is like really really bad as well. Like it's just like you're just not opening up with like 
You know, you need it to ha open up with two other cards. So that means that three cards in your hand is dedicated to making one card. Two cards in a five card hand is dedicating to having one card resolve. That's just insane to me. Um, but um, that's pretty much it. Um, let me know, guys, in the description box or like the comment box below your thoughts um, on other cards I should potentially look into as I build this list. Um, you know, my thoughts, your thoughts on if this water list is good, um, test it out for yourself. Um, and let me know in the comment section below, um, you know, like how it's been in testing for you. Like I decided to like take the water deck because, you know, I it got stale. The format got really stale for me to quite honest. And I wanted to play a deck that I would have fun with, right? Like, cause you go know, like half of it is having fun. And, you know, half of it is, like, definitely, like, you know, like, wanting to win, right? And so, like, I wanted to be able to win, but also be, like, having fun at the same time. And, like, I, quite frankly, didn't want to play Elric or Adamant Spares because, to be quite frank, like, those decks are, like, boring to me. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with playing those decks, right? Like, like you can play those decks and, like, you can do really well with them. But for me, like, I just wasn't having fun. Like, I can play Adamant Spares. I can play, like, Combo Elric. Like, like, I can play those decks, right? Like, I've been testing those decks. And um, because I play those decks, it actually helps me beat those decks because, like, I know the deck list. Like, I, I know, like, the 40 cards that go into, like, an Adamant or Pated deck. Like, I know, like, the 40 cards that are in, like, a Synchro Elec deck. And knowing those, how to play those decks lets me actually beat them. Um, especially when it comes to like, deck building and also, like, the in-game decision making. Um, so, um, if even if you don't like the format, definitely take the time to learn Adamant Payers. Take the time to learn Combo Elec because you can't beat the meta if you don't understand how to play the meta. And even though I'm playing a Rogue deck... Um, it's really really important to like actually know how to like you know play against like the meta decks and to play the meta deck itself um so without further ado if you're interested in more uh content like this and in order to like want and you want to watch me build decks like this actually live right like i built this deck live on stream um check me out at twitch.tv slash pack underscore official underscore tcg um i stream like usually like uh every day i'm around like 6 7 p.m est um and yeah guys thank you so much please con continue um to you know like comment and subscribe if you want to see more content like this um without further ado i'll see you guys in the next one peace